But I think the anxiety started to take a negative effect when I figured out that I had depression. I started to feel the symptoms for that at around eighth grade, and my anxiety started to manifest into something more like detrimental. So I'd always be worried about what I said to people, at least like a day after I said it to them. I'd just been thinking about, oh, hey, did they, did they take that the wrong way? A lot of my friends would often be like, why are you thinking about that? Just let it go. And so all the overthinking, I was like, is there something wrong with me? I honestly think that with anxiety, it's overthinking everything. There, Like you said, there's so many forms and so many ways that can manifest into your life. Um, with my anxiety socially, it could happen that I was really scared of what others thought of me, so self-consciousness. And so that made me more shy as well as overthinking when I talked to someone. Because I feel like as a child, before depression had an onset, my anxiety would make me more outgoing and confident. Like, oh, I'm gonna act this way so that everyone sees me this way. But after a while, I realized it was too much. And so my anxiety manifested, like I said, into self-consciousness. And as for overthinking academically, I definitely think that there are positive aspects to anxiety. Like it made me get better grades just because I would study so much, but it would also take away from my me time and having time to recharge. And just being constantly on edge also makes you more tired and can result in physical things too, like acne, or let's say like physically, I just wanna constantly be asleep, but I'd be pushing through it just because I felt like there was so much for me to do. It could also be like, I would stay up so late just to get an assignment done, or I'd stay up thinking about an assignment. I wouldn't even have the energy to do it, but I couldn't sleep just because I was thinking about it so much. My parents did not originally believe in therapy, and so the only thing that we compromised on was taking me to a family friend who was a psychologist, or maybe she's a therapist, but anyways, I didn't feel too comfortable, but I was like, if this is the best that it's gonna get, at least I might, might as well get some help. So I talked to that person, and after evaluating me and just seeing where I was, me like mentally, she talked to my parents, and my father's initial reaction was, yeah, it's just a phase, right? Like, oh, high schooler, she's just overreacting. Like, she'll, she'll be fine. And my family friend stood up for me to my dad, who was her friend. And I was just like in awe that she said that I sh that my feelings are justified. It's not just a phase. It's something I'm going through that I need help with. You know, like as children, we go to family functions and we hang out with family friends, daughters, sons. And so if I ever brought it up there, I think my parents would shy away and be like, this is like a shameful topic. Like you shouldn't be saying that stuff. So I questioned it for a while, but I think just because of the community that I grew up in, since I didn't, I never lived in India. I don't think it affected me as much. Yeah, it, it was just the struggle of, I wanted parental love and I wanted that support from my parents. I took a exploratory will class in the sixth grade. Actually, no, I think it was the eighth grade. And one quarter ended up being baking. And so we had a team and we all used to bake together and do assignments that way. And that sh like showed me that, oh, hey, I can do it from scratch. I'm not limited to a box mix. And so I'd make it for family functions, I'd make it for my birthday, my friend's birthdays. If I could find any excuse, I'd just be baking. After the assignment I was telling you about, do something creative, when I combined psychology with baking, I was like, this is something that makes me unique. This is something that I don't think many people have thought about. And so maybe it's actually good for a business. I took that bakery, which is originally called Disjointed. I don't know why I called it that, I was like, this is a trendy name. So when I actually thought about what I wanted to call my bakery, I was like, bellyache bakery to end the bellyache. And so that was my cute little slogan. And I had my Instagram, I had my Facebook, but then people started asking about, oh, what's this, what is this about? And so I was like, it's about mental illness. And they were like, how? So I started to explain that I did my cakes based on different psychological concepts and they're like, oh, do you provide like hard to suicidal hotline? Do you provide information about what that is? Because people start asking, oh, but what is this disorder? So I think after a bunch of like customer evaluations, it manifested into what it is right now, providing resources and trying to inspire open-mindedness. Making the bottom line made me happy. It didn't take away my anxiety and it definitely did play into it, like, Oh my, <laughs> I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to baking. I will 
draw a line with my frosting and then be like, nope, it's not straight. And so I'll take out the entire thing and redo it. I think that I take way more time than I probably should just decorating the cake itself because I want it to look beautiful. And so, yeah, my anxiety played into it, making me a perfectionist. And I, I would take times where I'd just be like, I need a mental break from this. This is really frustrating. And so I'd take a pause before it became professional. I would just like take a breather and be like, I'm so frustrated. I'm so angry. But then in the end, no matter what the process was, I would be so in awe with what I created. And so I think just showing myself that, as bad as it sounds, that I'm not worthless, that I can do something and I can amount to something, it gave me a purpose. As for how I battled it, I started out with things like self-care. Oh, I'm going to take like a nice warm bath. But then I realized it's not, it's not enough. Yes, it makes me feel good in the moment, but it's not helping me determine my feelings. And so I moved on to journaling. And with journaling, you really have to know what you want to get out of it to help it, to help you. And I think that after two weeks, I started to notice the effects and see that I was able to think more specifically about what's going on. Or I might notice something that I didn't notice before. On top of that, songwriting was another form of journaling for me. And so even before I knew that it helped me mentally, it was always a way to express myself. Because I started songwriting when I was in second grade or something like that, very young. But in the end, Right now, my main source is through baking, through my bakery. Even though it is my technical job, it also really does help me take time away from doing homework. I'm like, oh, I'm doing work. I'm being productive by making this cake for someone. And therefore, I don't think about my homework as much. And so it just helps me take a break. It's my like mental escape. I can't control my anxiety to the extent that I want to. And that when I try to control it, I make it into something negative in my mind. And it's not always negative. And so I took little steps, like academically, if I did a test and I didn't get a good score, or let's say after a test, I was like, I wonder how I did, did I do okay? I, maybe I could have done better, I should have studied more. I just tell myself, I've done it, it's happened, I can't change it, and there's no point in worrying about it. So the things where I realized that, I take a step back and I realize that I have no control over, I try to just completely tell myself that you've done this, you've done your best, there is nothing that you could have done more in that moment to do your best. And just taking a step back has really helped me reduce it. But I don't think there is a way, at least that I haven't found so far, to really eliminate it altogether. Because it is who, what makes me me. To just take a step back and appreciate the things around you. What happens in one moment will not last to the next. And you really have to take time to appreciate because you can find your happiness in the littlest of things like someone complimenting you. And I think on top of that, just advice to my younger self is do not overanalyze. I was like trying to diagnose myself. I was trying to figure out with this diagnosis, what is the things that I can do? Are these things actually helping? Just overthinking about overthinking and it wasn't helping. So just to take a step back and appreciate myself for who I am, to not see those things like overthinking as detrimental, rather to just add to my personality. And I think another thing was to be, I was very critical on myself. And I think I could have appreciated my accomplishments rather than focusing on everything that went wrong. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and comment with your own thoughts and experiences. If you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel at Real Life Videos. Let's rehumanize.